So it's 10, right? Yes, seven, seven to 10. Seven to 10, all right. Well, don't, don't start the clock just yet. Wait, one second. No, all right. I'm gonna make sure I reclaim my time like Maxine Waters. All right, um, thanks to the members of the Federal, Federal Trade Commission and for the opportunity to provide you with commentary on this very important topic. And I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge my distinguished group of fellow panelists uh, on the stage with me here today. But um, I'm gonna move on with my comments. I have no slides, so we're gonna just talk through this. Uh, when it comes to the topic of big data, no industry has felt the weight of its magnitude like the healthcare industry. Um, as the US healthcare system swiftly evolves into a more consumer-centric model, there is considerable interest in increasing access to medical care and therapies for patients, demonstrating value of care and therapies to patients, and improving clinical outcomes with patients. Historically, healthcare provider and payer organizations were in the business of providing acute care to patients under a traditional fee-for-service model. However, each has come to recognize and appreciate the need to understand the genetic, behavioral, social, and environmental factors, often referred to as the social determinants of health, that contribute to delivering positive outcomes and value for patients. This has, in essence, spawned a new era in healthcare delivery, an era of continual care delivery where routinely collected data is continuously fed into a system and ensures we have the information and to learn from patient experiences and clinical outcomes. In short, I'm referring to the establishment of a learning healthcare system that is built on healthcare informatics, big data, and advanced analytics. So the $64,000 question is why now? The ubiquity of health, dig, digital health technologies has served as a key enabler for providing this, this level of care while generating massive amounts of healthcare data or big data. Big data in healthcare is a direct, direct result of the technological advancements in the industry, advancements that include the accelerated expansion of electronic health record platforms, rapid adoption of smartphones and wearable technologies, penetration of social media in our daily lives, cost reductions in, geno in, gen in genome sequencing, and the repurposing of non-conventional data sources such as consumer, socioeconomic, and environmental data sets along with the sophisticated data analytical tools and techniques have created an environment where data is a valuable asset. In the broadest sense, big data in healthcare is often referred to as real world data. And it holds the potential to significantly increase the efficiency and effectiveness of all processes in the development and utilization of medicines, from research and development, to re regulatory decision making, to pricing and reimbursement decisions, and even clinical practice. Moreover, real-world evidence, the output of the analysis of real-world data, could implement the evidence generated from randomized clinical trials, or could supplement the evidence generated from randomized clinical trials, which can considerably improve healthcare decision-making for all stakeholders. So what exactly is real-world data and why all the excitement? Over the years, the terms real-world data and real-world evidence have been used mistakenly as synonymous terms. According to the researchers for the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, uh, the FDA, rural data is defined as data relating to patient health status and or the delivery of health care routinely collected from a variety of, of sources. These sources typically fall into four major groupings. The first being clinical data, which is patient level data pulled from electronic health records and or patient registries that describe treatment in the real world. The second category is administrative claims data, which is the data that is primarily used for billing purposes by providers to insurers or other payers. The third category is patient-generated data, which is data that describes the patient's experience and is collected and shared by the patient, his or herself. And the last category is the non-traditional health-related data sources, such as your behavioral, your social media, environmental, and, social, and or socioeconomic data. Real-world evidence, on the other hand, is defined as clinical evidence regarding the use and potential benefits or risk of a medical therapeutic derived from the analysis of real-world data. The simplest way to think about it is real-world data is any, any health data not collected in a traditional randomized clinical trial and can also include data from existing secondary sources. The importance of real-world data is critical to all stakeholders across the entire healthcare value chain, including physicians, payers, regulatory bodies, patients, and yes, pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers. Many are familiar with the use of real-world data for informing decisions related to patient treatment options, 
coverage determinations, or even policy decisions. But many, but some may not be as familiar with how pharma companies actually use real world data. Pharma companies are using real world data and real world evidence across the entire product life cycle to identify targets for the development of new therapies, support regulatory submissions, advance disease understanding and clinical guidelines, and support outcomes based reimbursement decisions. Real world data analysis has been identified by various regulatory initiatives, including the 21st Century Cures Act and Prescription Drug, Drug User Fee Act, as useful supplements to randomized cl clinical trials. Specific applications include the acceleration of drug approval pathways and expanded indications for approved medical therapies. When it comes to the process of collecting or analyzing real world data, generally we think of it in, in three stages. The first stage B is the study planning, which is where we seek to understand the evidentiary needs of a key stakeholder group such as a regulator or a payer. We then formulate a research question that then feeds into a study design where we identify the appropriate data sources to conduct that study. And that's equally important as part of this process to assess the availability, accessibility, portability, and even quality of the data for that particular study. The last stage is where we actually communicate and socialize the actual results of that particular study through a scientific publication. From the perspective of Pfizer, we primarily collect de-identified data to use in our real-world data study analysis from third-party data aggregators. If there are any data linkage and or aggregation activities required, we work with these aggregators who possess the technical expertise and competency to collectively, to effectively collect, manage, and link the patient data. Now, the benefits of analyzing real-world data for consumers or patients generally is, uh, we feel, is tremendous. We live in a world where most of the health-related data is collected outside of the walls of a provider organization. For example, consumers now possess apps on their smartphones that allow them to perform tasks such as recording, recording daily vital signs, documenting daily food intake, and even detecting triggers or symptoms for certain clinical events. These real-world data sources and studies that are associated with it are vital to documenting and understanding the benefits and risks of medical therapies in a heterogeneous population and to determining whether patients in routine clinical practice are achieving positive outcomes. As is often, with the, ca as often the case with cutting edge scientific and technological advancements, a full understanding of the ethical and policy oriented implications lags behind. There are several key considerations to keep in mind as we think about big data privacy and competition. Quite frankly, I do believe many of the key policy and ethical considerations are pretty much industry agnostic, which means that we tend to all deal with the same major issues. At the high level, the issues that are well documented are around informed consent and privacy. Some other concerns that, that are starting to uh, bubble up are issues around data ownership or the rights to use the data, the appropriateness of methods to analyze the data, the appropriateness of the question being analyzed, and even the legal context for which this analysis takes place. According to a 2017 Consumer Voices survey conducted by Consumer Reports, 70% of Americans lack confidence that their personal information is private and secure. 92% of Americans think companies should have to get permission before sharing or selling their online data. And 92% of Americans think companies should be required to give a consumers a list of all the data they've collected about them. Privacy concerns related to allowing the access and analysis with large real world data sets have greatly limited its potential. Since pharma manufacturers do not generate real world data directly, data access, data availability, data portability, and data quality remain significant barriers to advancing the science. Other ethical considerations that the FTC should keep in mind are the existence of big data divides which is created between those who have or lack the necessary resources and infrastructure to effectively analyze these large data sets. The next one is the monetization of data and the potential, of pro potential problems with ownership of intellectual property generated from the analysis of these aggregated data sets. And lastly, the future of real world data and evidence is in the aggregation of genomic and other omic data and the possible dangers of intentional or unintentional group level ethical harms specifically as it pertains to patients' beliefs about the benefits and harms to a particular 
racial, or ethnic group in studies. There is considerable high hopes for the use of rural evidence to improve decision making in the US healthcare system, but all stakeholders have a role to play. Pharma manufacturers have a critical role in driving innovation by using rural evidence to support clinical trial designs and observational studies to generate evidence and new treatment approaches. However, the need to protect personal data, consent, ethics, and data access are equally important, and harmonization of public policy and legal frameworks will be necessary to realize the full value of rural evidence. It is critical that the FTC, as part of its role to protect consumers and promote lawful competition, take affirmative steps to promote ethical use, data ownership, and privacy as it pertains to big data and healthcare. These are important considerations to keep in mind as the FTC reviews the state of big data and business and how it affects consumer privacy and industry competition. Pfizer stands ready to discuss the shared responsibility with all interested parties to make this vision a reality. Thank you.